All right, hey folks. So today I'm going to start a four part series on periodization. And I want to explain to you one of the problems associated with beginners as they go through the beginner to intermediate phase where they stall. And I want to provide you with solutions for one possible way of dealing with that stall, which I think many people encounter and not everyone knows what to do about. It's not just about gritting your teeth and working harder, okay? Despite what you might have been told. So firstly, thanks for making it onto my channel. Um, if you have any questions or comments on today, please pop them down below. And if you'd like to work with me on your own strength and physique goals, there's a link in the description. Um, go ahead and do that. I will do some coaching. I am taking on clients. So um, here's what I want to talk about today. Uh, here we go. So there are three broad categories of periodization. So I want to kick off with this. All right. Now, periodization is the organization of your training to accomplish a goal. All right. So there are three broad categories, linear, undulating, and conjugate. Now, before we sort of move on, most of you have probably heard of these terms. And I'm going to explain a little bit about them in a moment. But the the really sort of big concept that I want you to think about in your head is that all successful programs tend to cross all three. So we typically refer to um, like Westside as a conjugate program, but there are elements of everything within that. We typically refer to other things as linear, but there are generally elements of undulation within those programs. So I think it's important to be precise about the definitions. If I'm going to be explaining a large sort of four-part series, I want us to be sure of the definitions before we actually move on. But right now, we have three forms of periodization, linear, undulating, and conjugate. Most successful programs tend to cross all three. So undulating periodization is this. Undulating is where you vary the volume and the intensity across the week. And the idea is you're you're providing a rotation of stress to the body. So an example here, this is three separate chest days. Uh, bench press on a Monday for five by five. So we have heavier work there with a heavy exercise. Wednesday is the incline dumbbell bench for five by 15. That's a lighter work for the same area with a lighter exercise. And Friday, weighted dips for five by 10. This is very much what my wizard routine tends to lean towards is undulating periodization. And next we have conjugate periodization. Conjugate is when you organize your training to bring up different aspects of strength simultaneously. And it doesn't have to be typically like one rep max strength. When I'm writing strength here, I'm actually talking about all different types of strength. So really any kind of training organization for sports tends to be conjugate because you have a number of different energy systems you're trying to hit. So for example, for CrossFit, you may be interested in one rep max strength, you may be interested in endurance strength, you may be interested in actual out and out cardiovascular strength and all the various parts of that. So conjugate training for um, CrossFit is almost a necessity. So organization training to bring up different aspects of strength. And we have the typical example here, which is your sort of West Side barbell style, where you have, you mix up the dynamic effort with the maximum effort, then you have the repetition effort across a given week. Next is linear periodization. And this is sort of your typical, um, well, like five by five routines, I guess. The whole gamut of five by five routines tend to be mostly linear based, unless you have some thoughtful ones which move into more undulation. So week one, squat five by five. Week two, squat five by fives with more weight. Week three, goal is to add more weight. Week four, add more weight. This is your very typical progressive overload type of bodybuilding setup. I would venture to say most bodybuilding routines tend to be linear periodization, okay? Outside of our little sphere of YouTube where we sort of cross the whole powerlifter, bodybuilder, strength athlete kind of realm, in most mainstream bodybuilding circles, they are usually referring to linear periodization. It's basically your, you know, your typical add sets and reps, your double progression, that type of thing. So now <laughs> you might be wondering sort of four minutes into the video, why is any of this important? So as I've said before, most successful programs utilize elements of all of the above. So if you're going to be talking about where people stall, what the solutions are, we need to understand the definitions first. So my tactician program, for example, there is linearity in the progression. There is undulation in the training stresses, like for example, the eights, fives, and threes, and the heavy light work. And there's also conjugation in the variety of different stresses. So single repetitions, light work, repetition work, all that stuff. So most successful programs tend to utilize elements of all three. 
Now, the problem is, as I've identified, most people start off with linear periodization, as I did. And I made some very good progress as a beginner, but most people start with linear pro progression, and that's essentially becomes all they know until they hit a plateau. So for beginners, it tends to not only work fine, but it's actually probably preferred. So beginners can gain from session to session, and uh, later on, they can gain from week to week. So as a beginner, I would hit a lift on Monday, and I would be stronger on that lift by Thursday, pretty much guaranteed. So I could bench, I don't know, 30 kilos, and on Thursday, I would be able to bench 32.5. And then Monday, I'd be able to bench 35, et cetera, et cetera. So, and I have beginners on the books right now who are progressing linearly right the way through just by adding a small amount of weight to the bar three times a week. It works very, very well. And once that is exhausted, those same beginners can continue to add weight week to week, and they should do. Okay. Now, at a certain point, and I'm going to use air quotes for that certain point, that stops working. And they may require a undulation of load, so like my wizard program, or they may require even change of type of stress. So they might require like singles and they have repetition type of work, like my tactician program. And that point is usually, is, is that point is what we're discussing. Because that's where I see people struggling. They've done the typical bodybuilding type of stuff. The typical, hey, bro, go to the gym, add weight where you can, make sure you're eating one gram per pound of protein, you look after your recovery, and just try and add weight to the bar. They've done that. Okay. So a guy on YouTube screaming to them about saying, just, you know, get stronger, get stronger, <laughs> doesn't really add much to the situation because they're like, I'm trying to do it. Stop shouting at me. <laughs> so at a certain point, that approach stops working. So you need more of a variety of stresses. And that's where this discussion really picks up. So I'm hoping this is really helpful for you guys, because this probably describes quite a few of you. You've hit that point where you're just constantly running, running your head into a wall. You've had that plateau, maybe roughly been about there for a year, two years, whatever. And you just don't see yourself progressing past that. So that's the discussion we're having. So in my experience, this is usually the type of people who come to me um, for coaching. So if we take the fictional example of Joe, all right? Now, Joe was addicted to the consistent gains he made as a beginner. He now benches 80 kilos, right? So 80 kilos is a decent amount. His arms stretch the tape at 14 inches, yeah? Gains for Joe now are harder to come by, okay? He's tried the weight gainers. He's tried the high protein. He's gained some strength, but he usually puts on quite a lot of fat, and then he loses it all, loses all the strength when he cuts back down. So he's not really gaining any proper strength or muscle. He's just gaining like water bloat, which helps him lift more. He's tried switching routines. His mate Dave at the gym told him about this amazing new routine. And he's been doing that. And he's been really enthusiastic. And he says, yeah, I'm sure it's working. I'm sure it's working. He's like, well, have you gained anything? He's like, uh, well, we'll see. But he's sure it's working. But it's not really. He just believes in it, right? So that's, again, a description of this the type, the, the prototypical person who comes to me for coaching. And I imagine that probably describes quite a lot of people. He's also tried switching routines and he gets very enthusiastic about one style of training. And then a few weeks later, it doesn't work out. And then he gets enthusiastic about something else. Um, he has a good few weeks and he stalls. Has a good few weeks and he stalls. Now, this is where the situation, the sad story of Joe. Joe is now one or two years down the line. Okay. Joe started to look at YouTube for motivation, for inspiration, for information. Okay. But Joe is less enthusiastic now. In the beginning, he fully believed he would be one of those advanced trainees. One of the, he'd be able to get he'd be getting the uh, Gymshark uh, sponsorship any any day now. But he's less enthusiastic now. So as a result of being less enthusiastic, he starts to let it slide. Yeah. So he starts to smash a few pizzas every now and again, down a few beers on the weekend. He lays off on the eating schedule, and he decides to himself, you know what? I'm just going to like focus on myself for a while. Right? It's that silent admission that you know what? I don't quite have it, and I'm just going to leave it for a while. This cycle repeats itself for so long, deep down he can't really visualize himself as an advanced trainee anymore. He's just one of those endless guys who are at the gym, who are all roughly bench about 80 to 100 kilos, who don't look like anything special, who consistently turn up every Monday for years. You see him there, they don't really change. He's one of those guys. He also knows he'd do better with drugs. <laughs> 
he's seen a good coach by the name of Faz, who looks like he knows his stuff. But uh, but by this time, Joe has stopped believing. because he's, So he's thinking to himself, what could Faz possibly teach me? I need drugs for the next step. Okay. The next thing you know, he's 40 years old. He's never made any gains. Those pizzas have caught upon him. His flat stomach is now a keg. And his doctor is furious with him. And a friend of his suggests sports TRT to combat his malaise. And that's where the story ends. Right. But I think that's a fairly typical story for a lot of people who have seen, who've got the addiction to the gains from the beginner stage, got up to the point where, where they're at that sort of, I've talked about it before, that sort of intermediate plateau. And at this point, that's when they're on YouTube, they're looking for information to really get them to the next level, to really get them to the point where they are advanced. And that was me as well. That was me. Within a couple of years, I'd reached that intermediate plateau. And I needed to apply better periodization to then bust past that plateau to get to the 140 kilo bench, you know, four plate squat, five plate deadlift, all that kind of stuff. So my motivation for this series is to discuss one possible alternative to a linear progression to hopefully get you guys out of that intermediate funk. And that's sort of generally my idea. So starting from tomorrow, this is the, which should be the second part in this four part series, I'm going to introduce conjugate periodization and we're going to start by talking about the dynamic method and then it's going to be a series of uh, videos which are going to look at the um, maximum effort method also the repetition method and possibly a conclusion at the end in terms of what you can learn from this and what you can apply to your own training all right folks i'm going to call it there and um yes look forward to that for the rest of the week and as always if you want to fast track any of this and just start working with me so i can help you out of that malaise the big thing that I really love helping guys and girls with is once they hit that point where they feel they've exhausted linear gains and they are looking for YouTube, for information, for motivation, hire someone who knows what they're doing, right? I can help you guys. Like, I can take you from that point to the advanced stage. It's, it's just a case of effective training. So that's, I just think it's worth, it's worth the investment to save you years of potentially wasted years in the gym, of wasted progress. But anyway, I'll call it there and I will speak to you tomorrow.